Have you wondered how you can paint your new crew quickly? In this video, I'll show you how to do just that with tips to use across the whole squad. Make sure you watch until the end, as I'll also quickly show you how to get variations on that green skin tone. Let's get painting. I've primed a load of crude using a variation of Wraithbone, Wraithbone with white over the top and plain white. For this model we're going for a Wraithbone with a little bit of white over the top. The first thing I'll do is paint the skin and the colour I'm going to use for this is Militarum Green Contrast Paint. Now this is a fantastic colour for this because it settles in the recesses and leaves those raised areas a little bit clear as well. So it's a fantastic look and it's really easy so you'll get that skin done in next to no time. Next up I want to paint all of that leather and the colour I'm going to use is Garagax Sewer which is one of my favourite of all the new contrast paints. And what you'll see through this video is that I use all these colours interchangeably to really add some differentiation across all the models. To paint any bone elements, I just use Skeleton Horde. Now, it's really important with this, you don't flood the area too much. If you do, just clean your brush off and use it to suck up any excess, because you just really want to tint the bone areas. Next up, we'll take some snake bite leather and use this to paint any other additional leather parts that we haven't already done with Garagak Sewer. So I'm looking for some of the smaller areas, such as the bands around the skull and the little bit of trail coming off the weapon here. And again, remember you can interchange this with the Garagak Sewer across the models to give everything a unique look. Moving on to that nice big red cloak, the colour we're going to use for this is Flesh Terrors Red. And I'm also going to use this as an accent colour across the other models because it really helped pop and bring them all together. And in terms of how I apply this, I'm just putting it on and spreading it out. I'm being very careful to make sure that it doesn't pull too much in any recesses and I don't get too much separation across the surface of the model. Next up, we'll paint the hair and you can do this with lots of different colours any of the colours you've already used in fact, and I'm going to use Dark Oath Flesh, which is slightly different, it's fairly thin, it's a bit of a reddy colour, and it just makes it stand out nicely against the rest of the model. One of the contrast paints I use the most is Black Templar, and that's because the new formulation really works well with it. And what I'm looking to do here is paint, again, any other leather parts which you may not have already done, so I'm going to focus on uh, the leg coverings and also that vest that this crew is wearing. And again, you can interchange this across all the other models, you can paint some hair with it, you can paint some leather, belt with it it really doesn't matter all you need to know it just works fantastically well i also use that black templar on the weapon casing because it's a really nice paint that gives you that highlight and if you want to leave it like this you can and if you've got any other weapons across the squad that are black cased you can use it there too to paint all the nails and claws on the model, the colour I'm use is a Kelly and Green. Now this is quite overpowering, so just make sure you focus and keep it in that area around the claws and the nails. But the result you get is really fantastic and you don't need to do anything else with it after this. To shade any white areas, I take some Soul Blight Grey. And it's really important that you don't slosh this on so that it goes everywhere. You just want to work it in with a little bit on your brush like you can see me doing here. The last thing we need to base are all the metallics. So the first thing we're going to do is take some lead belcher and use this to base all of the silver parts. Now, what you want to be silver is entirely up to you. I'm going to paint the sword, the buckle and some other areas. But if you've got magazines or if you've got other weapons that you want to paint silver, then do those as well. I then take some Rune Lord Brass and use this to paint all of the accent parts of metal, such as the hilt on the weapon, but also some of the rivets that you can see and buttons going down the side of those leg covers. Then I take some Null Oil and use this to shade all of the metallics, both the Lead Belcher and the Rune Lord. It's a really easy step that really adds some nice definition. The last thing I'm going to base is all of those staples and stitches, and the colour I'm going to use this is Rakarth Flesh. So just take your time with this and work your way around, making sure that you don't spill this onto anything. The other thing I'm going to do as well is any scars that I can find on model, I'm also going to pick those out with Rakarth Flesh, and we'll shade them in just a little bit. We'll shade those scars with some Berserker Blood Shade. You can also use maybe Magos Purple or Bar Red, whichever you've got. And you just want a little bit on your brush, and you just want to shade around it, and this will make it look a little bit sore and like wounded flesh. Next up, we'll highlight any white parts, and the colour we're going to use is Bold Titanium White from Procrail, but you can use whichever white you've got or which you prefer to use. And what we're looking to do is just catch any edges using the shape of the model and the tip of the brush to get a nice crisp highlight. If you want to highlight the black, you can, and I'm going to use Thunderhawk Blue to do so. So what I'm looking to do is catch those sharp edges of the weapon, for example, using a tip of the brush and the shape of the model. Then when it moves down to some of that black leather, I'm, again, I'm looking to catch those raised edges that are going to catch the most light. I'm also going to paint the beak, or highlight the beak this way as well, just making sure I use very thin lines to do so. I want the red cloak to look quite worn, so to do this, I'm going to take a fairly desaturated red with Wazdaka red and I'm going to stipple this all over those areas we'd normally highlight. So just take your time with this, make sure your paint is thin. If you want to use an old brush that might help as well. And we're just looking to stab lots of little dots across the red cloak. 
To finish up the cloak, we're going to take some squig orange and use this exactly the same way as we used the Wasdaka Red in the last step. It's really important that this is fairly thin paint as well. You don't want to be using thick paint for the stippling effect. And what we're looking to do is focus this towards the edges of the cloak and also those most raised folds. We'll highlight the metallics next. The first colour we're going to use is Canoptec Alloy and we're going to use this across all of those areas that we based in Rune Lord Brass. Once we finish that, we'll take some chrome from Vallejo Model Air, or if you have it, Stormhost Silver, and we'll use this to highlight all of the silver parts. And what we're looking to do is just make sure that we've got a good crisp highlight using a point of the brush and the side of the model. The last thing we'll do on this model is just take some Krieg Khaki and use this to highlight the flesh areas. And we're looking for those most raised parts, as well as any sharp joints such as on the knuckles on the hand. This is a nice and easy step that'll really help this model pop. So I said at the start of the video, I show you different ways of getting some nice green flesh on the models. Now we've already tried Militarian Green at the start. We've also got the option of using Mantis Warriors Green, Croak Green, which is a shade, and also Gut Drip of Flesh. So just make sure you give them a good shade. You haven't got any sediment at the bottom, and we'll have a look at the results. First up, it's Gut Drip of Flesh, and whilst this is perhaps best used for Oryx, it actually works really well for Crute as well. You can see it's a slightly brighter green, but it gives you a very similar effect to the Militarum Green in terms of it fills those recesses and leaves those raised areas nice and clear. So it's a great looking paint for these models. If you want a much lighter green skinned croot, then the colour to use is croak green. Now this is a shade, but if you get it on there and work it across the model, what you'll find is it works very much like a contrast paint, except it'll give you a much lighter effect. And I really like the colour that you get using this shade. Finally, we've got Mantis Warriors Green, which has got a bit of yellow in it, and it gives you a much more vibrant skin colour. Now, this might not be to your tastes, but it certainly does add some differentiation across your Crute Warriors. So there you go. Those are lots of different ways. You get different green tones. You can mix it up using some shades, such as Agrax Earth Shade on this as well, and you get some really nice, different-looking models. Now, there we go. You have all the tools you need to paint your new Crute. You should be able to get them done in absolutely no time at all and on the tabletop. A huge thank you to all my patrons who make this channel possible. You can support me for just a small amount using the link in the description. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, check out my other content. I'll see you next time.